What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash Tales of Neckbeards. This story's called, Neckbeard-ish Man is Being Weird to My Friend and I. Hello, this is my first post and I was saving it for something this bizarre. Now this might not be the craziest, but I think it's pretty heckin' strange, my guys. Okay. TLDR at the end, since I have the tendency to ramble on and on and on. Sorry about that in advance. Also, I'll be naming mostly everyone after a flower or something. The cast experiencing this. Me, you can just call me Lily. It's a nickname Poppy gave me. My appearance kind of plays into this, so I'll give you a brief rundown of myself. I am a sophomore in high school, 5'6", so kinda tall for a girl, brunette with pretty long hair, really dark brown eyes, and very pale. Magnolia, my best friend. And she was actually the one being subjected to this hell initially, but like the frickin' plague, it spreads at an alarming rate. Her appearance is always important in this, so I'll give a brief rundown. My height, blonde with short hair, blue eyes, pale but slight redness, and with a resting face that a murderer would have. She's also a sophomore. Daffodil. I couldn't think of a clever name or a nickname for him. He's not my close friend per se, but he is Magnolia, so we're in the same group, you know? He's a bit shorter than Magnolia and I, but he's definitely really strong. He's a junior. Poppy. Poppy and I have been friends longer than Magnolia and I, but he's usually with other people, so he doesn't come in until much later. Sophomore. An enemy. He's Daffodil's friend, almost as tall as the antagonist, and hella stronger than Daffodil. Sophomore. Shrug. A beard. <laughs> Ah, yes, Shrub Beard. Now, Shrub Beard doesn't have a full on neck beard. He has a small patch of wispies on his chin. He wears the same red hat, I believe. It's a Make America Great Again hat, but I'm not too sure I can exactly look at him without getting uncomfortable. He's very skinny and frail, but likes to say he'll kick Daffodil's ass any day, though none of us really take him seriously. He wears the same gray jacket over a plain blue or red t shirt. Yes, it is literally only only ever red or blue. He wears hiker-like shoes, not boots, but definitely not a pair of Vans or Converse. His hair is mostly hidden beneath the hat, and thank the lord because from what you can see on his neck, it's greasy and slick. Like if you place him under the sun and take off his hat, he'd probably go blind from how shiny it is. His smell can be described as a public restroom and dumpsters filled with eggs and meat on a hot summer's day. Note, we live in California. He's a junior. Okay, on to the story. I typically hang out with the band kids ever since my old friend group split up because I now mostly hang out with Magnolia, who plays the trombone along with an enemy and Daffodil. That said, we're always outside the band room because the teacher is always busy doing something or other, I'm not really sure. So Daffodil and an enemy are practicing their pieces outside while Magnolia is talking to them about it and reads their music along with them. I'm just watching and making comments here and there about whatever I'm looking through on my phone. That's when we all heard it. The sound of a rolly backpack making its way briskly down the pavement. We smell it. The smell of parental disappointment and female discomfort. Shrubbeard has arrived, and I'm the only one who takes notice because I'm alone and not focused on anything. I gave him a glance and he locked eyes with me. I gave him a polite smile and looked back at my phone, but he kept staring. I looked back up from my phone and noticed that he wasn't looking at my face, but my chest. Me crossing my arms. Can I help you with something? Shrubbeard still staring. What's your necklace? I realize that he's talking about the necklace I wear every day. It's a gold cupid I put on a silver chain. The diamond in the heart has been broken off, however, many years ago. It was my grandma's old pendant, so I painted it with red nail polish. I relax upon realizing this. It's a cupid with a heart? Cupid? For love? Yeah? Well, it seems he hit me pretty hard. Oh, uh, rad. I hope it works out for you and them. Strubbeard was gonna say something, but Magnolia left Daffodil and an enemy to talk to me. After a bit, Shrubbeard finished his food and here's the kicker. He horked up some phlegm and spit on the ground. Now, I have a pretty weak stomach and the easiest way to get me to gag and very possibly throw up is spitting, especially with making very audible. I start to feel that tightening feeling in my throat, so I take out my earbuds and play some music. It's loud enough to drown out the spit, but quiet enough to let me hear Magnolia beside me and the trombones. Magnolia notices what I did and followed my lead. Here's the messy part. 
Daffodil, probably noticing that Magnolia and I are uncomfortable and also tired of hearing him hack up all the saliva in his throat and mouth over his music. Hey, could you freaking not? Yeah, dude, it's kind of gross. Why should I? Just don't pay attention to me, it's not that hard. After all, you ladies surely must be used to what real men do and act like. Real men? You're making Lily gag. Shrubbeard, at this point, looks at me. Why are you looking at me? I'm too busy trying not to vomit just being here. Shrubbeard, thoroughly annoyed, does that throat thingy and I decide right then and there that I was not going to throw up today. No sir. I turn to Magnolia, but Shrubbeard had already gotten up and in between us. He starts saying something about building up a big one. So we scurry behind Daffodil and an enemy. We thought we were safe. We were fools. As we talk, Shrubbeard crouches down and leans on one leg more than the other, so that leg is lower than the other while pulling one sleeve over his shoulder to make one arm look longer than the other. I guess he was going for the Quasimodo look. So what he does with his new form is hobble over to Magnolia and I. Admittedly, he doesn't do anything crazy weird like rub his face on our thighs or anything, but he does just sit there. He just sits and listens to our conversations. Finally, I started getting weirded out enough to point out where I need to go. So I take Magnolia by the hand, announce that we're going for a walk, and leave to go find Poppy on the other side of the building. We find him and talk for a bit, explain why we're there, and basically why we don't want to go back. You loved your backpack there, didn't you, Lily? I nod my head. Poppy nonchalantly says, I'll walk with you to go get it if you're so uncomfortable. Lunch was ending so I figured, why not? But goddamn, I wish I went alone. This isn't even a messier part. It's a full-on dookie tornado. We're walking in this order. Magnolia, Poppy, and then me. Daffodil and an enemy didn't even notice. Shrubbeard, on the other hand, did notice and took it as a call to reclaim the delicate miladies he laid his eyes on far before Poppy had. So what does he do? He stood right up and T-posed in front of us. I look up at Poppy, a certified meme lord, and I heard him whisper. You were right. He is weird. Shrubbeard watches us three, but I paid less and less attention to him as I joked around with Poppy and got my stuff together. The bell rang for lunch to end and I said goodbye to Poppy with a hug. I look back to see Magnolia in the corner behind an enemy with Shrubbeard T-posing over her as she looks very uncomfortable. I grab her hand and dipped. Anticlimactic ending for such a long story, I know, but that was only today. I see homie every day. I'll update on Monday if anything happens, but for now, I need to schedule a freaking lobotomy for Magnolia and I. Wow, this is like the one time band kids aren't being the weird ones. <laughs> Oh, but that is weird. Oy. Have you noticed that kids with roller backpacks, they're who you need to look out for. Freaking weirdos, man. And if you're insulted, you should be. <laughs> I'm teasing. This story is called, I dated a neckbeard while a legbeard stalked him. Sorry if the formatting is weird, I'm new to Reddit, I've watched tons of Reddit videos and finally decided to share this. Also, English is not my mother tongue. This happened around 5 years ago. I was 13 at the time. I'm a huge weeb. Because I was such a weeb, I couldn't really make friends with the same interest, so I decided to join an online chat room. I found an app called Geeking. This was not an app for kids at all, luckily it shut down. Geeking was an online app made for role playing or just chatting. It had tons of chat rooms and I made tons of friends there. Then I got a private message from a man that I met in a chat room. We will call him Jaden because he had some kind of thing for King Jaden from Yu-Gi-Oh. At first, talking to him was a lot of fun and I kept talking to him. I can't say how he smelled like but he looked like a textbook neckbeard. Fat with pubes on his face. He was 23 at the time, very illegal. He told me he had a thing for me, and I said I'd online date him. He decided to put my username in his bio to show everyone that he was dating me. Now the real crazy starts. I started getting DMs from a random girl. Let's call her Candy because that was in her username. She was nice at first, and after a few days, I considered her a friend. She started asking me about my relationship with Jaden. This continued to the point where it was all we talked about. Me and Jaden were fine at the time, meaning nothing happened yet, but it was still very illegal. Quickly after, Jaden started being super sexual with me. He had a thing for BDSM and told me to do what he says because I was his submissive slave. I was still 13. 
I told him that I was uncomfortable with it, but he told me that I had to do what he says and that if I don't, he can just go back to his ex. He'd often compare me to her, saying she's a lot prettier than me and all over him. Because I was young and dumb, I went with him. I sent him nudes, too. I was very uncomfortable with this, but I thought I was in love. I was getting closer to Candy, and she showed me what she looks like. She was overweight, looked very dirty, her hair was greasy, but I can't say how she smelled like. I told her what was going on with me and Jaden, and she told me, You should be happy at someone like Jaden wants you. I was very hurt by this. I told her how hurt I was, and she just said, If I was with Jaden, I would do anything he wants. He'd be so much happier with me. I felt my heart sinking. Not only did my friend say these things, but I felt like I was at risk of losing Jaden. Then it hit me. Did Candy know Jaden, or was she basing her opinion on what I had told her? So I asked. She said that she had met him in a chat room a year ago, but never talked to him in private, but checked his profile often and found out he was dating me. I got mad and told her not to talk to me again. She told me that she'll just start talking to Jaden and that he'd probably want her more than me. I blocked her. I told Jaden what happened, but he got mad that I was talking to someone about him. He said I should only talk to him and never talk bad about him behind his back. I just said I wouldn't do it again. Jaden said he was super mad at me, but I could make it better one way. That was sending nudes and having a dirty roleplay with him, so I did. This kept going on for three more months. Every day I would, oh gosh, with him because that was the only thing he wanted. I got tired of this so I decided to break up with him. I told this to him and he got very angry. He said he had tons of girls and doesn't need me anyway. I just said okay, then he said he could just move on to Candy. I didn't even reply. I was hurt that he was talking to her when I wasn't even allowed to have friends. I unblocked Candy and told her she can finally have Jaden. She replied that she already has him and they were having sex online. Ha 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 ha. I was hurt and blocked them both. Thank God, they totally deserved each other. Thank you for reading. I hope it wasn't too confusing and hope you enjoyed reading it. Um, that's a neck beard, all right. Oh God. Oh god, I'm sorry that this person went through that, but oh no, that was just, oh man, thank god that place is down. Ha! Huh. This story is called, Junior Neckbeard Pokes My Legs. Okay, so I have another example of a neckbeard, but he was my age at the time, so I'm gonna call him a junior neckbeard. Two years ago, I was doing a sailing camp in America with my younger brother, and since I was already good at sailing, I was the intermediate group, and everyone was very nice and understanding, and we all had a lot of fun, save for this one kid. Junior Beard was very annoying. Usually when I meet new people, I have to explain my scars on my arms and legs, skin picking disorder, but in sailing camp, most people had the same scars from various sailing injuries, so I only had to give a short explanation. Cut to about two days after I explained, and I had gained a few new scabs, which usually appear during the summer, and I was sitting with my friends during lunch. Junior Beard enters the scene. This kid was practically a neck beard, but shorter and no beard. No idea of respect, personal space, and always complaining about the fact that me and my friends were better at sailing than him. And he walked over, stood right next to me, and started poking my legs, right on my scars and scabs. I immediately jump back, and he says, Is this some sort of dare? No, I just wanted to see what was up with your legs. Dude, that's gross. Why would you do that? At this point, he does a complete turnaround and says it was a dare. I'm not sure whether it was or not, but it definitely was weird. He was also full of sexist comments about my friends and how he liked how fit one of my friends were, and generally made everyone uncomfortable. Also, he was a horrible sailor, so he had no right to say he was better than me and my friends. Y'all, unnecessary body contact is unnecessary, guys. Oy, stupid kids. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.